Welcome back to the Game to Love podcast. And on this episode, we're going to be speaking with bright US prospect Alex Rybakov. We'll be speaking to him about the growth in US tennis and also about how there are 46 American players inside the top 500 ATP rankings. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave any comments you've got in the section below. How's uh, life been for you in quarantine over there Man, in the US? Uh, pretty uh, not too eventful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's funny because when I played my last tournament, I played a challenger in Calgary, then I played a future in Vegas, and my body was hurting a little bit, so I came back to to Fort Worth and I got an MRI. I actually had a stress reaction um, in my pubic bone, so wow. it was. I, I have no idea. I think it's just like you that know, sounds painful, man. I've never heard that before. It sounds painful. Yeah, yeah. It's it was just kind of like overuse and so my body was pretty beat up so i actually got lucky in a way because i wouldn't have been able to play the next month at least so i've been rehabbing a lot um you know doing some lessons on the side um my coach is really into meditation so i've been doing that which has been a grind um it's it's good and just um you know i have one of the guys who i'm rooming with kind of in the house so I'm not alone, which is great. Um, just kind of hanging out with the same, you know, six to eight people, um, playing some golf. So, not, you know, nothing crazy, but not, you know, I, I know a lot of people that, I know some people who are in Spain who literally haven't, you know, left the house in a month, which yeah, is yeah. brutal, you know? Totally. So, so, so compared to other people, honestly, it hasn't been too bad for me. But, of course, you know, I miss miss competing and, um hopefully everything will resume july 31st like they say even though i, I doubt it but fingers crossed yeah, exactly. fingers crossed mate yeah, yeah and do you have much access to courts and stuff there yeah, just i mean there there are some uh usually when i'm here i'm i'm in fort worth right now at tcu where i went to school and usually when i'm here i uh practice on the tcu courts but the okay. tcu facilities are closed everything in the school is closed so the courts are closed um, there are some public courts that I've been hitting on, but since I've been a little hurt, I haven't been hitting too much anyway. And mm. I'm not, I'm not going to be hitting every day until I'm hundred percent healthy. And I, you know, there's no point if we're not playing for another two months, you know? Yeah. What about the buddies you're living with? Are they tennis guys or are they? Yeah. Yeah. One of the guys that's uh, on the team, um, oh, okay. in Argentina, uh, some of the other guys, they, they all went home the foreigners. So, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Is is it competitive between you? You just knock him off the court. Six <laughs> nil, six nil. <laughs> no, it's competitive. It's competitive. He's been a little hurt as well. So okay. Um, That's his excuse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, he's not. Nah, he's good. He's good. That's cool. Uh, yeah, you had uh, like you were saying, you had some pretty good form that was you were yeah, like, yeah, in so before I've, you had yeah. this uh, injury. Yeah, I was. I was playing. You know. I, I had a really, really good off season um, with Nori. I was working with Nori a lot. Um, you know, I was I had this new uh, strength and conditioning that he was working with as well, and we were all kind of having fun and really, really getting after it and working really hard. And I, I had a lot of expectations going into the new year, so I started off kind of like just like a lot of unnecessary pressure on myself. Um, and so not the best results coming into the beginning of the year, which was my first year on tour, you know, officially yeah. out of college. But, um, yes, it's starting to go like into second, third month, February, March, I was starting to get going. I had some good wins and I felt like I was playing really well. So that was, that was a bummer, but you know, it is. Yeah, no, we both love watching you play. Like we've, your yeah. name, we're like, it must sound crazy for you, but <laughs> you're someone we have spoke about a lot over the years. Awesome. Like, I appreciate it. Um, we just look like on tennis TV, you get to see a lot of like clips and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the matches we get to get to see as well. Yeah, and yeah. no, we think you're a brilliant player, man. So we just, we, we're excited to see where the future, um, yeah, the future I, I holds it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, it's funny because, uh, you know, a lot of my buddies who 
like some of my closest friends that I'd grown up with, they turned pro right out of uh, high school, like Riley, Tommy, Paul, you know, yeah. all those guys that I was training with before. And they're, they're obviously doing very, very well. They've um, kind of made it now, haven't they? Exactly. They've got exactly. Past that next so, level, yeah. So it, it's been great. Um, like when I was 18 going to college, because I, I was a pretty good junior as well. Um, and at first it was kind of tough for me to watch them shoot up. And I was like, oh, man, like I'm in school. Like I, I want to play too, like, yeah, uh, but- you know. <laughs> but then well, once you mature a little bit and um i i just love love seeing my my friends like all my best friends do do well you know it, it not only does it motivate me but it's it's just great like seeing it all your best friends win and, and do all that and i'm just now it's ma- mature to the point where i'm like okay like i have my own my own path you know to where mm-hmm. like i don't have to be 50 in the world right now because like if i make it in three years it's fine you know like definitely yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure there's no everyone. right way there's no set path what people exactly. follow. everyone exactly. does their own thing so it sounds like to me you're still on that path man you're still doing you're, you're still there you're waiting just to break through yeah, and get I that next it, I it. yeah but it's it's great and and you know it's awesome that we're still so close and and i see them and i ask them questions and i learn from them you know because they, they went through it kind of at a younger age that i did so yeah. uh, just learning from them and and seeing them do well is, is just great yeah, we were speaking with. Well, sorry, Jack. I got you, sir. Yeah, I was going to say we were speaking with uh, the wolf, who's obviously Taylor yeah, Fritz's yeah, physio, yeah, yeah. and he was yeah. telling us all about the camaraderie and how, yeah, like, all yeah. oh, the US yeah, guys, it's, it's, yeah, 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 have a lot of fun. It's a yeah. good group, and I think it's nice to have like a close sort of friendship group, like all yeah, pushing it's, each it's, other it's, on and yeah. cheering each other on on court. But then there's a competitive spot. If you play 100%. them, you want to beat them as well. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's crazy because uh, like in my year, uh, 97, 98, there's like, you know, six, seven guys that are, I mean, obviously you got, you got the guys, Francis, yep. Fritz, Opelka, Tommy. So yep. you got those guys that are already, you know, like top 50, top, pretty established. But then, yeah. you know, like Michael Mose, like close to yep. top 100. Um, Mackenzie McDonald. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a little older, but then you got like, Will Blumberg coming out of college. Yeah, there's a big group of guys. Um, You've got so. some really promising young players as well, even younger than you. Yeah. Like uh, I mean, it's like you've got uh, like this uh, Martin Dam who's coming. Yeah. He's yeah. 16 yeah. at the moment. Zachary Svaja and yeah. Jensen Brooksby as well. We know how well he did in Grand Slam as well. Yeah. So yeah, there's yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. Uh, I feel like American tennis in the coming years is. Uh, I was shocked to uh, read uh, that. 46 players are inside the top 500 for U.S. men's tennis, yeah, which man, is brutal. <laughs> crazy. That's like ten- talk about talk about some of the other guys I know. Um, you know, playing Davis Cup, like ranked like 300. Um, some of the smaller countries, I'm like, man, I don't know Davis Cup. <laughs> yeah, a <laughs> hundred people to to get by before I made the Davis Cup team. Should have a few teams, I think, <laughs> for the U.S. D teams. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, why not? Why not? Indeed, I think that'd be something really beneficial, because that yeah. sort of follows like along the lines of the is it like the college tennis like yeah. route where you're just playing in teams and yeah 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 we were speaking uh, who was it we were speaking with uh, last time they said that they really benefit I think it was uh, Michael Gertz yeah Gertz yeah, went yeah. to he went back to uh, Arizona to uh, play it, it, for college it, it, I, had a, <laughs> I played him in November um in the finals of a of a 25k and i was uh um what was it i was up five three serving 40 15 in the finals and i lost oh Oh, gosh that hurt because i I beat him in college as well i beat him in college as well and he he got me but yeah, no, probably, he's, he's a great guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, you're yeah, probably he's a really nice guy. We're speaking to him at like the last podcast, wasn't we, Ben? It seems yeah. like um, he's similar to you. In fact, he's had an injury as well. He's coming back from an injury. Yeah. I feel like a lot of players are. I don't know why. It seems <laughs> like, um, very much. So everyone's injured at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's good for things like this, though. Zoom and stuff. People are always more willing to do it when they're yeah. injured. Not, not yeah. got so much on. Yeah. But um, what I wanted to actually ask you is a sort of away from tennis, actually, is um, a lot of the American guys, they're really into their video games and stuff. Yeah. So you personally, are you playing them as well? Are you better than yeah, Fritz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of Warzone. <laughs> you play a lot I've of Warzone? Some, uh, yeah, I've had some, some doves with Fritz and, and Tommy and the guys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's the best? <laughs> oh, man. 
I would say me. I'm gonna say me and Fritz. Okay. There's, I'm decent. I'm decent. I mean, it, it depends on it depends on what you're comparing to. You know, like obviously not like pro cod players, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. But Fritz is really good. Fritz is really into it. He knows like the details. You know, he's got me doing like all the different attachments on the guns. <laughs> like, like <laughs> got me locked in. But but yeah, I mean, everyone's pretty solid. Yeah, what do you play on PS4? Is it yeah, PC? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. nice. Good, so he's good. got all the setup. I'm sure he's got the right <laughs> headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's no, got no, all the I, nice I, screen. I, 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 like, he's got the screen and everything. I'm like playing like my friend's PlayStation. I'm like, <laughs> doesn't matter. It's all about how good you. It doesn't matter what setup you've got. It's just how good you play. <laughs> But yeah, it does help though. If you've got a nice uh, yeah. 70-inch uh, plasma screen on the wall and you've got a nice gaming chair or something, it always <laughs> helps. For sure. I know. But yeah, I wanted to, uh, to like pick your brain if we move back to tennis a little bit. Mm. I just was uh, shocked to see, like I know you play predominantly on hard court just because it's uh, you're in the US. But yeah. I've seen like your your clay court form is just so amazing. Like where, when, why can't we see more of you on clay courts? Like it's just, I saw in 2017 and 18, you lost once and you won 15 (laughs) matches on clay. Like this is crazy. Yeah. 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 No, it's coming. It's coming. You'll see me. (laughs) Um, it's, it's just been, honestly, um, that's been a talk like with me and my team and my coach, uh, and, uh, what we decided for last year, cause I was coming out of college in, um, uh, in like June, you know, took a little bit, took a couple of weeks off and, you know, had a little mini off season, started to get going. And the conversation was okay. Like we're already halfway through the year. I kind of want to stay in the U S for now. Um, and there was already kind of a schedule around because, we were kind of hoping we, we weren't sure at the time, but we were kind of hoping and leaning towards the fact that I was going to get a wild card in the U S open qualities. So we were kind of planning around that. So kind of staying on hard. And then by the time we got to U S open and I got to play that after that, it was kind of like towards the end of the year. And then I got invited to be the hitting partner for the Davis cup team. So it was kind of like, okay, like I'm staying in the U S and then next year we kind of build around the clay. So to answer your question, like 100%, I, I love playing on clay. And I played uh, three futures in the beginning of the year on clay, which didn't go great. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it was just, it's just coming out of college that last year, it was kind of like a, you know, just the way everything worked out. I didn't really get to, and you know, most clay court tournaments are in Europe. So yeah, um, that's why we want you to play more. We yeah. need to come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't get to play. Um, in 2019 but that was actually my hope for this year was in the summer i was going to head over to europe and play a big clay court swing um nice. and so that that didn't, didn't quite work out but uh, yeah for sure you'll you'll see me on the dirt you'll see me on the dirt a lot more yeah no the dirt suited to you man because it's um yeah. it's a mental game it's so like uh there's so much more rallies it's a bit more yeah, physical sure. in terms of like uh i just i'll be i think it's exciting to see you on there and it's just clearly the results have shown that you're able to do it as yeah, well yeah for sure yeah i've always i always loved clay but uh, without disregarding grass as well, when what about Wimbledon? When are we going to see you there? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's thing, even closer to home, Ben. We don't even have to travel for that one. <laughs> <I know. laughs> exactly. That's up the road. The thing is, in in juniors, I actually won a G four on grass, and then nice. coming into uh, the slams in juniors, I remember playing because it's Roehampton then Wimbledon. Okay, yep. and I remember I came like kind of from the French and juniors, and then came over to <laughs> to Roehampton and I lost and I w- it was just horrible. Like I was playing like 10 feet behind the baseline, like grinding. Like it was, just, I had no chance. And then <laughs> I, I, uh, one of the coaches from USTA was like, okay, I can't watch this anymore. So we started doing like, you know, we, we started working like slice volleys, you, you know, just like, okay, if you're going to win on grass, like you got to play, you know, you got to yeah, be aggressive, yeah. you got to. Yeah go for it so then i actually did ended up doing decent in, at wimby so um and then i lost like round of 16 but i actually honestly over the years in college playing so much indoors fast courts i actually don't mind a fast court you know I, as much as before i was like only mostly clay so i would love yeah. to get over there and play on grass i mean that's always fun 
Ah, yeah. Come on. Speaking of uh, indoor courts and playing fast, I was just uh, checking back some recent matches and uh, saw this match where you beat uh, Ghost Wader. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there was yeah. some dodgy line call in that match. What was yeah. this umpire up to? He was, uh, it was about like, this, this far like, outside the baseline or something. He just calls <laughs> yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that was the, the ref. There was maybe, like, I mean, there's always one or two bad calls, but that match was just an absolute battle, and uh, it, it was just a roller coaster emotionally. and just The longest the possible three set ever, yeah. isn't it? No, <laughs> Seven, it, was six. Brutal. it was brutal, because I was, I was in a position to win the match, and he's obviously a very good player. I mean, he, he used to be like top yeah. 50, he was still like around 100. And yeah. so I was, I think I was up... 5-2 or 5-1 in the second set breaker. I was up a set and up basically, you know, two points win the match. Yeah. All of a sudden, I hit one ball short, like another ball in the net. All of a sudden, 6-5 him serving. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 and what in the world, you know? And so I, I feel like the, the more, the higher the level, it's like you lose focus for a split second all of a sudden, you know? Everything can change. So true. Like, so. The higher you got the rankings, when them crucial points just become harder and harder because yeah. you need to be able yeah. to take them. And that's what differentiates these top guys between exactly. like, the next sort of breeds. He's, it's because tennis is fine margins. It's just like um, exactly. everyone's quite good at tennis. It's just like um, yeah, it's just like a lot. little, yeah. Um, yeah. it's like fine things just here and there, like points for break points and just yeah. crucial moments, like playing your game, keeping the focus. For me personally, like, I play a bit of tennis here and there. And when I'm at a point where it's like a big moment, like a match point or a break point, say if I'm serving as a match point, it's just like a, but that serve is never any good. It's always <laughs> a bit weaker, like I'm a bit more tense. Yeah. I just it's, I just hope to get it over and then hopefully the rally can start. I don't know. It, I'm just more tense. Yeah. How do you, yeah. how, like in these big moments, like what do you do? Do you do anything differently? Yeah, or... I, I think it's important to, to, in the big moments, like stick to your routines, you know, mm. kind of treat it as, it, it it's funny because you have that little like barrier between like okay this is a big point, but then you want to treat it like okay, I've been doing this you know I've won points like this already so many times like what what am I doing kind of have a go like a go to play in those big moments that way it's it's kind of like muscle memory you know you don't even have to think about it too much um, yeah that's that's kind of how I treat it I try not to overthink it too much you know. Do you have any of those? Uh, I've heard there's quite a few players that have these sort of things that they do during the match, like rituals that like yeah. there's obviously like the bounce between the legs and all yeah. these type of things. Do yeah. you have any of those? I have, I have American a, guys love it as well. They always <laughs> yeah. got some. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, like I don't have I don't have too many things that are like really specific. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I think is pretty funny, like. I I don't know how it came about, but like when I'm serving, I always bounce the ball at least three times. I don't know if it could be three, it could be four, it could be five, it could be six, but never under three, never. Okay. <laughs> um, and then um, just like little things, like I try not to step on the lines. Like I I don't know, it's like, <laughs> like stupid things like that. It's like this is common though. I think yeah, yeah. I think is this just a way of just I don't know. In my mind, it when I watch players do it. There's sort of like a, it's like a reset button or something exactly. that you're like doing. And I think, I think for me, like between points, going to the strings and just like focusing on my breath um, yeah. is a big thing. But th those are like the little like superstition kind of things <laughs> yeah. that have, uh, I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah, mate, everybody has these, these weird things that they do. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I do many of them just around the house. Just to, uh, there's this is normal, just normal everyday life. I, every time I see a magpie, I have to salute it because otherwise I have really? bad luck. You yeah, this that. is one. This is a That's British weird. thing. It's just called like if you see one <laughs> magpie, it's one for sorrow. And if you see one on its own, you have to just salute it. And I'm like, oh. I've always heard that, but I didn't think that was real. I know I, I had it, a real thing. I had it once before when I was just like I didn't know it was a thing for other people, and I was in the car as a passenger with my mate driving. And he was driving this magpie flew past, and we both did it at the same time. I was like, he knows as well. <laughs> it's not just me. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, everyone's got their superstitions. This. I think it's totally normal. Yeah. I know. Oh, so, like, on your tennis sort of upcoming future now, obviously, we haven't known tennis going on at the moment, but hopefully, 
probably not 2020. I'm hoping that maybe we get something that's going to be more likely 2021 now. Yeah. Like, what is your sort of aspiration as to where you want to sort of achieve? Like, do you have any like short term goals for the next yeah. few years? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the first step for me is uh, just getting getting to slam qualities. That's like the next um, next step. I feel like I feel like my game is there. I feel like uh, you know I just need to need to play, need to be there, play, 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 stay healthy. Um, try try to you know I haven't really gone. T- deep in challengers, you know, semis finals, um, try to get deep in challengers. I've, I've had some big, bigger wins already, you know, close to top hundred. So that, that's the next step for me. Yeah. Nice. Do you, Do you have like a particular slam that you want to sort of get into more than any others? Yeah. I mean the open for me, just cause it's, you yeah. know, I, I, I was born in New York. Um, my parents live there just being American. That, that, that's the main sign for me, but I, I love, I mean, all the slams have their own particular culture. That's really cool. So I loved, I loved going to Wimbledon and juniors. Uh, it's just different, you know, you just got a different. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit more unique, isn't it? Yeah. Like all the, the all whites, the atmosphere, yeah. the grass <laughs> and the, yeah. Yeah. We were speaking to uh, Dennis Kudler on one of the uh, previous podcasts as well. Uh-huh. And he's obviously uh, made, what was it? Third or fourth, fourth. I think round they fourth the, round. Yeah. When you're, yeah. yeah. Bob yeah. keeps on coming up against Djokovic. In this, yeah. uh, <laughs> Grand slams, which is not someone you really want to be facing. Yeah, no yeah. matter what you hit, the guy it always keeps him coming back. But he said when yeah. you go in that US Open, go on that main court, he said it was like a nightclub in there. Yeah. He said <laughs> he says he just wanted to crack open a beer. Just wanted to, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But that's what, yeah, hoping we get to see you in this type of uh, situation at some oh, point. Man, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love, I love the big savers. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, talking about some of these big players, like, do you have a specific player on tour who you like look up to as like? It doesn't have to be necessarily like one of the t- big three or anything. Just a player you like, you love watching. Um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe I, their style of play, their work ethic, or something. Yeah, specific. I think Fed is kind of everyone's, you know, role <laughs> model in a way. Obviously, you know, he just the way he goes about things and his game, and um, it's just great. I mean, just watching. That's kind of who I, who I was watching growing up, him and Rafa. Um, yeah, I mean, respect him so much, and honestly, to get to play him would be would be unreal. At the uh, U.S. Open, probably, mate. If you get for the players, <laughs> you, probably, you probably could get Roger Federer. You never Federer. know. You never know. I could catch him on the way out. You never know. <laughs> First yeah. round, maybe. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is with him, like even if he's just come back from this injury, it's just not someone you want to be playing. Like he's a uh, yeah, yeah. Is at any point? Doesn't matter if he's not played tennis for a while, had the coronavirus, yeah. all of this stuff. He's going to be ready and he's going to be there. But it's Roger Federer. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> just thinking, man, if I catch him at like forty. Yeah, <laughs> like a set or two, like you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you've, you've it's got just a... beautiful like that. You know, you really never know. Yeah. Do you, do you think that that's one player like with the Federer? Because even well, it's sort of like between the two players, you're obviously a lefty as well, yeah. and uh, so this is the Rafa side of things. But then you have the uh, single-handed, yeah. like yeah. forehand and uh, backhand. Sorry, yeah. like Federer, which is yeah. like a piston. Your your backhand. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like? Who do you feel like you, you've uh, like modded your game around more? Is it more Federer with the single hander? Or... Yeah, I think I think just from the clay and like looking for my forehand, I think it'd be more around Rafa type. And I think my backhand is a little bit more like it's got a little bit more shape to it um, than Fed. Fed is a little flat and like you know a lot more of his slice is much better. Like he's got a lot more variety and much better on on grass, obviously. And I would I would say my game personally would be modeled more around rafa i actually watch um uh Shapo hmm. quite a good amount because we're we obviously with lefty one-hander uh pretty similar games he's he hits the ball a lot bigger than me um but it's been interesting for me like watching him and how he plays just to kind of see like okay like how can i kind of bridge that gap because obviously he's you know top 20 in the world so he proper hits it hard man he's oh, got yeah. a lot of flair as well he hits <laughs> he it unloads. so high the ball yeah he unloads on the ball he unloads uh, yeah sometimes in the umpire's face <laughs> 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 but yeah that's a, that's another uh, another thing I was going to ask you yet yeah, on the topic of uh, Shapovalov uh-huh. uh, we've got so many of these great young players that are coming through now that are sort of pushing like trying yeah. to bridge that gap on the big yeah. three 
Which one do you think is going to be the one which is going to finally uh, nick that Grand Slam first, do you think? Oh, man. Before you answer, do you think they'll be able to do it while the big three are still playing? Oh, yeah, two, two parts of that one. <laughs> now, that's a tough question. Um, I think someone will nick a slam while they're still playing. I, th- I think maybe not like this next year, but I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. Um, so I think TM's so good on clay, but if Rafa's there, it's just <laughs> Rafa's like a god, you know, on clay. So he's like untouchable. Mm-hmm. So, um, obviously Medvedev was close. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a couple guys there. I think, I think Felix, um, yeah. just watching him and like, I don't really know him. Like I know him a little bit. I don't really know him great. Like he's not one, like a close friend. It's like a high and by type thing. I've seen him play in juniors, but I know, I just know like the way he goes about things and his dedication and work ethic is really good. So yeah. I mean, like you said, there's, there's, there's probably, you can name, you know, five, six guys that, you know, at any point, you wouldn't really be surprised to win mm. a, a slam. So yeah, you got City Pass as well. Another really yeah. good player. You could see. I don't know. I feel yeah. like there's still things you can work on in his game, especially like when it's on his backhand side, it's more yeah. like the slice and stuff. But yeah. aside from that, I think he's obviously got the game to be able to do that. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be interesting for years. It's, it's just like you say, they're so good. These guys, these other yeah. three. It's like on clay, you can't really beat him. On grass, yeah. you've got the other two. Yeah, it's just yeah. like a. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough because you know. You say that, and of course, it's it's like you wouldn't be surprised to see those young guys win a slam. But then, you know, going deep semis finals, all you see is Roger Rafa. <laughs> like, it's, it's like it's crazy. Yeah, no, they're they're literally yeah they're monopolizing the game on the yeah. Grand Slam <laughs> level. Yeah, but it is interesting because we well with team we've spoken about on previous podcasts. We thought that. Maybe he was he lost the final more than Djokovic won the final a little bit in the, in uh, Australia, just mm-hmm. because he had the, he was, had all the momentum, he had all of the great shot making, and then suddenly it just started just unraveling a little bit when he start getting those pressure points again. And yeah. I think that's yeah. all he needs to work on in his game, just those pressure so situations. Time, man. The more more yeah. times he plays them, it just become more natural to him. Yeah. Be able to go off sort of more muscle memory with things and just be a bit more relaxed and because he's clearly got the game yeah but yeah we'll see what happens there's there's other people out there who are still young that everybody sort of forgets in the picture just like Karen Kachanov uh, Andre Andre Rublev they're both young as well yeah so they they could enter the picture quite easily. Yeah. I mean, Rublev is having a storm in beginning of the year. Yeah, I would say they're in the picture already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. They're in top 20, so they've yeah. got to be in the picture. Yeah. And then everyone... Yeah, back to another one in the picture as well. Alex <laughs> Rybakov. <right here. laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, what I wanted to know is, how's your, how's your injury now? Is it, is it a bit better or...? It's better, yeah. It's better, it's better. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. say if tennis was to resume in 2020, would you be able to play? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. It's just um, I'm at right now. I'm probably like ninety percent. I'm I'm running. I'm, I'm I'm hitting. It's just that I can't like full out sprint yet. So that's that's like the last thing that I'm working okay. on. But but yeah, I'm better. And then I guess you obviously the fitness side of it as well. Cause yeah, I saw Tommy course. Paul playing in a exhibition match, and he looked a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was coming down on him. I'm not sure if he was ready for it. <laughs> yeah, when Tommy when Tommy needs to be ready, he'll be ready. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I, so I noticed in one of your uh, games just at the back end of last year, you were coming up against uh, one of our young British hopefuls, Jack Draper. I'm sure you you guys are probably going to play each other numerous times in the coming years. Uh, yeah. He's someone sort of we're we're not hanging all our hopes on him yet. Obviously, yeah. Murray's sort of going out the picture yeah. a little bit. I'm hoping he can come back and make another run at one more grand slam you never know mm-hmm. but uh yeah with uh, jack draper you had like a really amazing match against the uh, him which he sort of took the first set i don't know it was like he came out of the blocks really fast took the first yeah. set 6-1 then you sort of regathered yourself took a 6-2 yeah. second set and then a massive battle final yeah. set yeah, yeah i mean how how highly do you rate jack draper do you yeah, think no, he's, he's- He's very good. He's very good. 
I <laughs> that last set was kind of ugly. I had I definitely I think I was able to break twice. I definitely yeah. had chances to uh, to close it out. But he's very good. He's he's young. Um, I think he's what 18, 17, 18? Uh, yeah, uh, I believe he's eighteen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, already at 18, he's got a pretty, I wouldn't say like fully complete game, but he's got a good serve, uh, returns well, like solid off both sides, can come in. Um, yeah, I, I think he's very good, and I think he'll have a great career uh, going forward. I think he's already, what, close to he's like 300 or something? 285 at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's <laughs> moving up quickly. Um, I saw him a little bit during the offseason, kind of when I was working with Nori, uh, the LTA. Yeah. Is that I watched him uh, work a little bit, and yeah, I, I think you know, moving forward, it'll be he'll be fun to watch for sure. Do you what, think Nori really like? Because I don't, I'm not sorry. Ben. What's Nori <laughs> no, actually like? Because we've not seen too much of. Um, I don't know about you, Ben. But I've not seen much interviews or anything with Nori. Nah, he's, I've seen him on court, and he's very. He's a brilliant player. Yeah, obviously, very. being just hopeful, probably our best one, maybe got Carl Edmund as well. Dan Evans, but, mate. Um, Oh yeah, Dan Evans. As well. <laughs> I, I should I should never make these generic statements of the yeah. best, but yeah. uh, he's up there. Put it yeah. that way. But like, uh, what's he like as a man? This guy. Yeah, I was about to say, like, man, don't forget about Nori. Nori's a what, fifty, sixty in the world. Yeah, world. yeah, he's top yeah. fifty. Isn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so he. Of course, Nori, of course. The, Nori's one of my best friends. I mean, we were we were teammates for two years in college. Uh, he's a lot of fun, man. He. Uh, one of the things that's great about him is, uh, you know, on the court, as soon as he steps on the court, he's a hundred percent. He's one of the hardest workers I know, but off the court, we have a lot of fun other than tennis. Um, just doing our thing. He, he, he's just a, a fun guy. And that's really, there's not much I can say other than that. No, yeah, yeah, for I sure. Mean, no, we'd, we'd love to get him on. Maybe have a little chat with Nori as well. See what uh, he's yeah. doing. Yeah. We've just had, we've, we've had so many great times in college and, um, you know, I kind of look at, you know, I have my, like my own kind of like my coach strength and conditioning, but we, we actually work with the same strength and conditioning guy. Um, and he has his own coach, Faku, that he, uh, went to TCU as well. And so like, I have my little team, he has his little team, but I, we're kind of honestly together in a lot of ways. Um, like I have a group chat with his team as well. And it, it's just like, he's one of my best friends, you know, it's, it's, a like, bit of a bromance, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like an everyday thing, but, um, yeah, he's great. We've been, he's in New Zealand right now. Um, but we've both been golfing a little bit, talking about our golf games. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How's your golf game developing? Oh man, it's, it's got a lot of work. It, it needs a lot of work for <laughs> sure. Um, man, the thing is, I was never really into golf. It wasn't something that I was doing when I was young. Yeah. So it's something that I just recently gotten into. So my swing is ugly, but <laughs> I, uh, I just like getting out there and having fun. You know, it's super yeah. chill. You can go with friends, you can drink. Yeah. 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 No, it's nice, but I've been playing a bit. Of, I've been playing a bit of golf as well, just because the weather's been nice as well. And when you're going around, like you say, it's a nice course. It's quite picturesque. Yeah, yeah. Some of the courses as well. I like the my 19th. golf is terrible. Oh, my, <laughs> my drive's okay, but after that, it's just a bit. Uh, <laughs> Into the green, it's a bit of a trouble. The chips are brutal, man. Mate, uh, it's all the, it's the putting, mate. That always does me. Oh, yeah, putting, I get you. Mate. That's the most frustrating thing of all time. They say, what is it? They say driving for show. No, yeah. putt, putting for dough. Or something. <laughs> That's what my friend always says when we go play golf. I'm always good off the tee, and then it takes me about another seven shots to get to the green, and then another seven <laughs> on the green. <laughs> Terrible, mate. Yeah, I'm no good. So playing once a year, you're never going to be that good, are you? I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I think we're running out of time, Ben. Well, yeah, we got call, five so minutes. We'll probably wrap it up there. Do you have anything uh, else you wanted to say? Uh, yeah, oh, well, I just wanted to ask one question I was just thinking of, but we sort of, via like beard off uh subject like what what's your sort of uh thoughts on i know that there's a lot of players who play predominantly on one surface like you get these players who sort of push themselves up the rankings by just predominantly playing clay court or they mm -hmm. just predominantly playing the one surface like mm -hmm. do you, how, how do you like feel about like this side of things do you think players should be playing like the more the whole year round on all different surfaces or should they just be picking and choosing like one surface yeah i mean you gotta 
you got to do what suits your game. I feel like, um, you know, there's, there's some people that's trying to make money, you know, trying to make a living. So if yeah, you're for better, sure. get on clay, go for it on clay. If you're better on hard, play mostly hard. I don't think there's really should be any, um, like rules on that. You know, everybody has a different game style. Everybody has it. It's like, if a guy's better on clay and he beats you on clay and you're better on, on hard than him and play him on hard, you know, it's like, if, if you yeah, meet him on clay, kind of you're going to, and you're better on hard, you should beat him. If you meet him on clay, it's tough. You know, it's like, Everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses. So I, I think at the end, it kind of levels out anyway, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. For sure. I mean, yeah, that's just one thing that I always uh, noticed that there was just some, some players who were just predominantly, obviously there's in Europe, we, well, in England, we don't really have clay courts yeah. at all. I mean, I, I didn't even see one until I was probably about 18, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, around the other parts of Europe, in Italy, Germany, all the other countries in Europe, they're all predominantly clay court like yeah. tournaments. Yeah, I'm not sure if the clay works for all the rain. That's why. No. <laughs> not a good mitt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it gets a bit sticky. <laughs> but anyway, man, we're running, we've got like three minutes left. So yeah. I'll, I'll just wrap it up there. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully yeah, things go well with your injury and I hope that, that when you when we see you back on court, everything's going well and you can be able to just boot, uh, go on from where you've started and thanks for everything, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, thanks for having me. No, it's been a pleasure and yeah, don't forget, get back on those clay courts because we want to see you over in Europe <laughs> playing and, uh, and the grass and, and, the, as well, and, the, and the grass as well. Yeah, come over for some uh, grass court tournaments over in the UK. We'll come along and cheer you on. So I love, I love And we'll have a beer as well. Yeah, I'll why not? <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take care of that for sure. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Uh, cheers, man. Anyway, right, right. have a good right. day, man. You too. See ya.